the topic of the symposium this year that SCORE is organizing is social housing, housing mm -hmm. the social. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps you could say what your take is on, on such a title and the urgency for such a symposium. Well, it's very hard to interpret anything that's happening at the current moment or historical conjuncture, if you prefer, uh, except in the light of the fiscal crisis and the collapse of uh, the world economies into some strange version of stagnation. And it's worth pointing out that the origin of the financial collapse was a housing crisis. Uh, there's a certain irony to that because it appeared to be a, a boom in housing that uh, extended to people who formerly couldn't buy houses. I'm talking about the United States. Uh, houses uh, on strange, strangely generous terms. And of course it was all uh, a pipe dream of the bankers. And it brought everything down. And ironically, the people who were at the bottom who were gulled into accepting these housing uh, loans and so on are blamed for the financial crisis, which was, of course was engineered by bank speculation. Uh, I think at the same time that we're all worried about the collapse of the Eurozone and the collapse of the dollar and stagnation in our incomes, we ought to remember that the question of housing is the baseline question for people in all kinds of places. We need to think about what is the social element in housing, what is the social responsibility, and what, what do we foresee as the future of human beings in relationship to the right to housing, to a home. So that's my take on it. But I have a second question, which is, is this such an abstract issue that we're forgetting the particular subject vantage points that people have. Uh, those who are living in the houses, are they uh, women? Are they minorities within the societies in which they live? Do they have adequate provision for what they need in terms of defining a house and so on? So I'm interested also in circling the question directly and then also in seeing it as a metaphor for the notion of society itself. Is that from your role as an artist? Is that the potential and perhaps the responsibility of the artist to do so? Well, I don't know what responsibility artists have. I can only speak as this artist, not as the artist in the abstract, but certainly one of the things that artists can do is to concentrate and symbolize the issues at hand by talking about them next to the subject or from behind the subject or to enfold a net around it of language or images or whatever it is that artists can bring to thinking somewhat differently about things that present themselves in very specific and literal fashion. Is, is there a space or maybe even a potential for, or I should say, is there space or urgency for collab collaboration in that between the artist and that surrounding context, whether it be political bodies, whether it be financial, economic bodies. Uh, how, how do you see that from, from your role as an artist? I think that artists are always weaving their way in, around, and through bodies of people who are not artists in society at large. Even at the most sequestered and studio-like moment, artists are living and working within a context. Certainly in the question of housing, as far as I'm concerned, most of the work that I've done in relation to these questions have to do with working with groups who are not artists in another space. So speaking for myself, I think this is something that artists can facilitate, which is conversations with bringing various groups together to talk and think and work on questions of housing. But there are many ways that artists and others can do that. At the same time, and you mentioned that already, there is a, um, there is a very uh, urgent situation we find ourselves in, financially, mm -hmm. morally. Um, from that, uh, 
you could say, there's a disinvestment, both socially and economically, in exactly these issues, in exactly right. the potential that the right. artist has. Right. How, how does one uh, negotiate that? Well, it's complicated. In the Netherlands, in particular, you have art being dismissed as, as we know, a left-wing hobby, which means that the funding for art should be removed because it's taking it away from the good people. But at the same time, even in the Netherlands, we find uh, the popularity of the ideas of Richard Florida, which have to do with using artists, bohemians, gay people, uh, to gentrify and to make areas attractive so that worthy middle-class people can move in. That is, they're there to hold and occupy a space in order to raise the income generating capacity of that space. So on the one hand, artists are being knocked aside as useless, and on the other side, they're the army of gentrification. So of course, in the moment of the Occupy Wall Street and Occupy Amsterdam and Occupy other movements, we need to remember that rather than gentrify, we need to occupy by showing up as self-representative people who make demands on the society that tells us who we need to be. And I'm speaking specifically as an artist now. Mm -hmm. That sounds like responsibility. Yes. Yeah. But I don't see myself as the moralistic type who says that artists must do this or have to do that. That's the moment at which I grab my coat and I run. Okay. You mentioned the gentrification. Mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting point also because here we're dealing in regards to uh, housing mm -hmm. and uh, the situation of, and you've dealt with the subject, entitlement and, and dispossession. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a creation of symbolic value mm -hmm. in, in, in the, the, the positioning of art and artists uh, in regards to social housing and, mm -hmm. and changing mm -hmm. situations of social housing. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe elaborate uh, a little bit more on that and perhaps give an example of, of it either in your work or in a situation in the U.S. currently? You live in Brooklyn, for example? I live in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, yes. uh, I think, is a great case study for for the topics that, that will be raised in this symposium? Ironically, I was born in Brooklyn and live in Brooklyn, but I live in Greenpoint, which is the next neighborhood after Williamsburg to be, it's in direct proximity, to be gentrified, Bushwick on one side, Williamsburg on the other, and Greenpoint. I've lived there for 26 years, so I've watched the flow of uh, populations there and the way in which very particularly the entry of the middle class art gentrifiers is completely transforming the neighborhood and making it visible to the media who love the middle class because the middle class means money. It means uh, rising real estate values, and it means glitz and glamour, and raises the visibility and flash of any neighborhood. So, I just did a project about the gentrification of Greenpoint, or I've just begun a project. I've just done a little tiny part of it. Do you think that middle class also represents a certain notion of stability in this? Well, I think it means tax rolls. Okay. There's no, I think it, it's yeah. direct financial interest. There's no uh, sense of normality in that? That too. Okay. But normality means people who can pay for the necessities of life and who can bring income both to the city itself through tax rolls and also to real estate interests, seize and hold. You know. And, and also represent, uh, uh, how do you say that? Middle class values. Middle class values, which are considered to be social values. Uh, if, yes. if these people are living here, what, what, can, be, what can be wrong? We've provided well, them houses, we're doing good deeds. Who's we? I'm speaking uh, in the sense of perhaps how a p political point of view may, may consider it. I think it's more that artists are as I was suggesting before, on the one hand despised, and on the other hand 
revered. Artists both work and also don't work. They're magicians and geniuses, and they're slackers and layabouts, you know, both at the same time, whatever is convenient politically. Uh, I think the interesting thing about Richard Florida's theories is he actually invokes the notion of the bohemian, which used to stand in complete opposition to middle class values. But if you look at Boltonsky's theories, Luke Boltonsky, of course, he uh, uh, has been writing about the, what should we say, the transformation of the notion of the, the well-lived middle-class life, its infusion by what has formerly been called bohemian values. Well, I should say, what appeared to be bohemian values, but actually have been sort of hollowed out and replaced with another set of values that have to do with right living, mm -hmm. just the opposite of what bohemia used to represent. Is, is there a moment where that, what for you is the moment when that becomes instrument, instrumentalized? whether it's political or on any other level. Can you, can you define? Is there a definition of that moment? You know, this is a temporal question because there's nothing about art that, and representation that hasn't been instrumentalized. When I realized in the 80s that our very presence was instrumentalized through the gentrification schemes, uh, I had to think very fast, and the only thing I can say is that one has to negotiate these things and try and stay deinstitutionalized if possible, because we certainly can't escape our role as gentrifiers, or if there is a way, I don't know what it is. The good thing about artists in this regard is that there's always a large segment that's willing to take on these issues and also to ask, what is our role in the social? as in this conference, what is our responsibility? And then there's that moment where, uh, is there that moment that requires them uh, to manifest themselves, um, well, more, more institutionalized. For example, here in the Occupy movement, um, you know, their discussions, and a lot of the discussions are actually uh, dealing with what kind of replacement could be found. For? for the, the status quo, both politically, in terms of populist politics, right. Right. as social housing, right. uh, the way that uh, the, the political and the financial sector, uh, the political field and the financial sector mm -hmm. are dealing with uh, housing shortages, mm -hmm. uh, that at the same time realizing new buildings that can't be sold, uh, which is very much the case in Rotterdam. Uh, artists are very much looking for uh, a, a replacement for this, mm -hmm. but at the same time realizing that once they become that replacement, they're in a position where they, they have to actually step out right away. Can, can mm -hmm. you identify with that struggle? Uh, I identify with that struggle I have for a very long time, but as I said, this is a kind of a interweaving where we always have to kind of constantly reassess strategically where are we in relation to these questions? What position should we take? The thing about the Occupy movement is that it needs more time for exactly the discussions you're talking about to take place. I think that one of the great virtues that it's shown is that people are there representing themselves, not other people, and are willing to take the time to say, who are we, what are we, and what, what do we think that society requires? Can we enact it in any way? And is there an importance of them incorporating the, the right players to, to act on that? For yes. example, housing corporations? What's a housing corporation? Remember, I come from a funny country. A housing corporation is, uh, well, started as a very social initiative in the sense that mm -hmm. cities were being built, people mm -hmm. who were building them needed a place to stay. Mm -hmm. So corporations, people with money got together mm -hmm. and realized housing for them. Mm -hmm. And through small fees, small low rent, uh, could actually manage that mm -hmm. situation. A lot of the housing corporations in the Netherlands today uh, obviously have become more privatized, are mm -hmm. investing in real estate as mm -hmm. capital, uh, with, as a, with a result that it's not only uh, social housing, public housing, it's very much private housing mm -hmm. and, and sort of broad investments, mm -hmm. which uh, are uh, volatile uh, in terms of the market. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
these corporations have percentage rulings for artistic uh, interventions. So when they build a new apartment building, they have a certain percentage reserved for, uh, for an artist. For yeah. an artist, but for how an about artistic... for low-income people? Yeah. That's Are artists question. in competition with low-income people for set-asides? You could see it that way. Mm. You've actually answered the question that I wanted to ask. <laughs> Do you, do you, well, which is, do you think such a budget, does, does that make sense to you? Well, it, yes and no. I, there's a question here of allocation of resources. If artists are literally in competition with poor people for a fixed budget and for fixed spaces, then, there's, then it's impossible for artists to go along with it. Of course, most artists are poor in relationship to corporate employees and so on. But their needs are different. They tend to need workspaces and so on. I mean, this is, this is a complicated and sensitive issue. I actually believe that artists deserve live-work subsidies, but not at the expense of other people. However, this is really hard to figure out. And there's no abstract answer here. You know, because it's constantly under manipulation by the corporate and municipal powers that be. Yeah. What, do you, what do you expect from the symposium, actually? Do you think, uh, does it make sense to have this, uh, to have this discussion? Absolutely. And what could be more timely? Yeah. Do, you, do you expect a result? That's maybe what I'm trying to ask. Uh, I could never presume to expect anything other than some really thought-provoking conversations. And uh, I don't mean to sound idiotic, but how can one predict an outcome of something that hasn't occurred yet? And who needs to be here to have that conversation? Who do we have to have at the table, as far as you're concerned? Well, certainly artists. But it would be really nice if there were activist groups, representations from activist groups and squatter groups if they even still exist, and people who uh, have a stake in whatever outcomes the social housing question uh, uh, invokes. So tenants in social housing uh, certainly should be here. The question is, are they at all, uh, do they feel invited by a group of discursive intellectuals or people who've done projects, you know, this is always a question of why should those people participate with us and do we participate with them? And I'm sorry to break it up into us and them, but I'm just talking um, for convenience sake about what is our primary focus in life? You know, are we artists or, or do we happen to be tenants or people who are uh, architects and urban planners who actually should be deeply interested in these things, but maybe they don't want to talk in the frame, the discursive frames that we've set up here. I can't, you know, I didn't plan the conference, so <laughs> <laughs> I can't say who should be here. Yeah. What do you think? I think you uh, actually gave a very good rundown. Uh, the housing corporations, what I mentioned, I think they're, yeah. they're a party that needs to sit at the table as well. Mm -hmm. Not just the tenants, but the, the owners as well. The owners. The stakeholders. Which, in fact, should the stakeholders and therefore yeah. representatives, yes. actually, of, of their norms. Right. Thank you, Martha. Look, I forgot that you wanted short answers. I'm no good at short answers. Don't worry about it. <laughs>